Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I'm going to be working on the Trios renovation project, but I'm not going to be working on the Trios itself, but on things to go in it. It's summer, more accurately, it's the summer holidays, which means that my times for filming are few and far between. It is also hot. Now, I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but here in the UK, this summer has been, well, up and down. We've had nice weather, and by nice weather, I mean hot. Well, hot for the UK. Not hot for certain other places, but definitely hot for us. And then it's gone straight to being cold and wet. We're currently on a hot day and I want to make the most of my time. So I'm going to work on some small stuff. Um, I will just pull out the tree house. Um, I can't pull it onto the table because it doesn't really fit properly. Um, but I'll pull it out and just explain a little bit more about what I'm going to do today, maybe, and then we'll get on with it. Here is the treehouse as it sits. Obviously, I haven't started work on the log cabin bit at the top. I will be doing that, hopefully, in the not too distant future. I've still got a lot of work to do with railings. Um, I need to build a ladder, which I may do in this video. And then, of course, I've got my market area. Um, I need some more baskets. I need some more crates, as I made in a previous video. But um, I'll do those off screen. I also need to just let me slide this round. This is the easiest way to do it, honestly. I need to work on the inside. I've made my templates for my shelves, um, my unity things that I'm going to put in here, um, but I'm not going to do those today because they're going to take a lot of um, fiddling about, so I will leave those for a cooler day. And I'm going to work on some of the things that are going to go in there. Um, when this is complete, I want the, it's going to have a, a magical vibe. I want the ground floor to be more of a market. So there's going to be produce and such like with the odd, more magical ingredient thrown in. And then as we go up, it's going to become more magical until we get to the top, but we're not there yet. But as I say, I'm going to start with the smaller things. So I'm going to swap back to the desk and we'll get started. The bonus, I found my other baskets. I thought I'd made all the baskets. These are smaller. They'd fallen off the um, tree house while it was sitting um, in my craft room and um, they're obviously ready to fill as well. Now I'm actually going to start off by filling one of the big ones but um, I've had a little bit of an issue. I want to make some produce and in the past what I've used is this. This is silk clay. It's an air drying clay and it's quite good. It mixes the colours okay it's not brilliant um, you can paint it afterwards it stays a little bit soft not really soft and squishy but it's not hard and brittle and it lasts pretty well however my white has dried out and i really don't feel like going out anywhere today to get any more so I'm going to have to think outside the box for some of the things I want to make. But I have managed, by using the other colours, to make one colour that I need. I'll put that out of the way. And I've made some brown. Now, 
anybody who has ever mixed paint will know eventually if you put enough colors together you get a brown color now i started off with red and green and the red is very vibrant in this and i came out with a color that was actually more um purpley which yeah so i did a little bit of black to darken it down and then i've added a little bit of yellow to um alter the tone a bit and as you can see it's sort of foamy it's a bit like some of the slimes that you get these days but it's designed to dry now you don't actually have a lot a whole lot of time to um, work with this um, I'm not sure if it will dry quicker because it's hot today or not but all I'm going to do is I'm going to make some balls well I want some sort of elongated balls because I'm going to make some potatoes and <laughs> You probably don't want to sit here and watch me make all these but as potatoes come in all shapes and sizes this is what you can do now it was a bristle off a paint it is a bristle off a paintbrush that's got stuck in there I don't hope it's a bristle off a paintbrush if it's a cat here we've got a problem because I don't have a cat um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to make any number of these and I'm going to put them to dry and then we're going to fill the basket it's because potatoes even magical folk like potatoes wouldn't you say now I'm not aiming to make enough to fill the entire basket I am going to part fill it and then just top it off so I'm probably not going to use all of this. Um, what I normally have, and actually I've got one in use over there, is I normally have an empty pot of these to put mixed colours in so that um, it lasts a bit longer. But I don't appear to have one apart from the one that's full of my um, black wash. So I will have a look and see if I can find a little air tight container to put this in just to um, keep a bit. But I'm going to make a few more of these and when I come back, these will be dry and we can put them into the basket. My potatoes are now dry. Now, if I show you this one, you can actually see that it will actually give a little bit when I squeeze it. Um, it goes back, though. It's not soft it won't hold any um squish that you give it and they are going to do great in my little basket now obviously as i said i was not going to make enough potatoes to fill the basket but i do want to make it look like there is a lot in there so i'm going to cheat now i got some little scraps of a cereal box and i have cut two pieces and I have made a little frame. It's literally the cutter slit in each one and then feed them into each other. And I'm just going to pop this inside the basket. And as you can see, it fills it up. Now you could fill this up with something. You could fill it up with some um, waste paper, that sort of thing. But I'm just doing this because it's actually a bit quicker and then on the top of these bits that stick up I'm going to pop a bit of glue just along there because I want it to um, stay in place I want the next piece to stick in now this I've just cut a rough shape that is basically big enough to go in there and I've coloured it in with an alcohol marker. I've just gone for a dark brown. It's one I've got that I use quite a bit. It's um, a dark wood tone and it will just disguise the fact that there's nothing under there. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push that in and push it into place. And as you can see, I'm then left with 
a small section of the um, basket to fill. And to fill it, I am just going to put in the first place a good dollop of my glue onto here and I'm going to start putting in potatoes. Now, hopefully I've got enough to give the sort of effect that I want. I wasn't um, paying all that much attention to quantities. But what I want in the first place is I want to get a, um, a reasonable coverage across the basket. And as with anything else, it's just apply the glue. Now you could just um, apply a blob of glue straight into here, spread it out and um, have done with it. But of course, you can also do it, I did bit by bit, you could glue each individual potato. Now I know that these are probably all a bit too even in colour, that I should have varied the colour, but I can add some variety with the colour I do hope that, I don't know what these are. I thought they were bristles off one of my paintbrushes. I don't think they're off this. And they're too short to be hair. Really confusing me. I'm having problems with this. If I got a cat, I could understand it because they're like cat hair. Unless of course I've brought something back that's got cat hairs on. But I don't think I have. So, just pop all these on, and as you can see, I've now got a full basket of potatoes. Now what I'm going to do with the remaining ones is I'm going to give these a few minutes to um, stick. And then I'm going to stick these individually onto the top. And then once everything's dry, I will add um, a little bit of dirt. Um, I've got some brown eyeshadow around here somewhere and I will use that to give it a bit more of a natural dirt effect. But for now, I'm going to let my glue cure and um, then we'll go on to something else. The potatoes are finished. I've added a little bit of chalk. I couldn't find the eyeshadow, but I put some little shavings of chalk on there and I think they'll do nicely. So next item I wanted to have a go at were cauliflower and this is where my absence of white silk clay um, got my mind thinking and I thought well how else could I make a cauliflower and what I found was a wooden bead. Now I have painted one side of my wooden bead with some white paint and this is quite a thick white paint and so what I've been able to do is I've been able to get a bit of texture into the um, into the paint. Now it's not as textured obviously as it would be if I was using the silk clay but it is enough for what I'm doing. So I've got my cauliflower. Obviously, I wanted to present my cauliflower with some greens. So rather than going back to the silk clay, I turned to some copier paper and I got just some ordinary printer copier paper and a green alcohol marker. This one's um, lime green. And I coloured my paper in and it does have the advantage of it, it soaks through so you don't have to colour both sides. And I got my hole punch, my heart shaped hole punch 
and I've printed, uh, printed, I've punched out a load of arts. Now, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some glue on the bottom of the heart and I'm going to put the heart onto the bead and um, cover up where the holes on the bead would be. I have put a bit of glue into those holes and set them a bit, just for starters. And what I've done is I've repeated that process um, four times around the bead. Now you, literally, I just find I need a bit of glue, a good amount on the bottom and then put it so that the, um, the heart, the green heart sort of covers the bit that goes from white to bead. Now you can spend as long as you like um, getting this like you getting this right um, I actually recommend that you give it a little while to um, set a bit for the glue to take a bit to sort of set a bit um, before you start trying to manipulate the paper too much now with four arts on that one slid down because of course it has because I'm on camera. You've got a fairly well um, surrounded cauliflower but the underneath is still bead. In this case my beads were wooden and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start turning the very top bits of these pieces back giving it a bit more um, a bit more volume that's the word and that one has really slipped down on this side I don't know why I really do not know why I'm just going to push it in and you can You can titivate this as much as you like. And then once those are dried, I do recommend letting it dry enough. You can go in and put another round around. And I've got two here that I've done. That's actually my favorite one, I think. And you can build up a good amount of greens on your cauliflower. Now, if you wanted it to be more correct, you'd actually have more greens surrounding the white bit. But I think from a miniature one, that is going to look really, really good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my boxes, I think, and I'm going to put them, put them in my box. I can get three onto there, or I can have a look at one of my baskets and putting them into the top of one of my baskets. If I'm going to do that, what I'll probably do is do similar to what I did with the potatoes with a piece to hold it up, but colour it with the green and put some more pieces of the green um, leaf leaves in the bottom. So yeah, very, very simple bead and paper cauliflower. Here are the completed... Um, cauliflowers. I added some more random bits of greenery so it looks like there might be some more underneath and then obviously my three lovely cauliflowers on the top of this little basket and I'm really pleased with this and I did actually um, the paint that I'd put in my palette earlier on to paint these beads had started to go quite gloopy and I just put a little bit more on the top, which has added some more texture, which definitely works in real life. And um, I'm pleased with this. Now, obviously, 
I did my potatoes with my air drying air dry clay and it's actually occurred to me that you know you might not have like the silk clay coloured clay you can do it obviously with ordinary air dry clay just make little balls little well they're not quite balls they're potato shaped and then um, paint them by putting a few drops of paint into a small container and rolling them about. You can use a toothpick or something like, so that if you want to keep your fingers clean, and that would work as well. I'm not sure what else you could use that's a bit more um, everyday, but um, it certainly would work. For a final make today, I'm going to be using some more of the copier paper and my green alcohol marker. Now, as you can see, what I've done is I've coloured most of my piece green and I've left a bit white. And all I am going to do is take a needle tool. I would use a quilling tool, but I don't know where that is. I have got one somewhere from um, my past exploits in um, paper craft. And I'm going to start rolling up the paper. Now, you might have already guessed what I'm making. But then again, you might not. Now, I'll put the needle tool down. Once you've got a roll that's a reasonable size, um, you want to get a bit of glue along the bottom of the paper and then roll onto it. Now I'm just going to pinch that for a few seconds. It will soon take, as you can see, it stays in place. And then I am just going to trim this close to the um, roll. Now, what I can now do is I can fold this piece back, which gives me a bit more shape. And I've got a very basic leak. Now these will do for my purposes because um, obviously I'm going to be putting them well I'm actually going to be putting them into one of my little crates but if you wanted to make something um, a bit more usable you could tight you could do it far tighter than I have the other thing you can do is if I take some glue just over here I can block up the end and it just makes it look a bit better if you wanted to, to include it on a um, table. You could put some little tiny bits of a very fine thread to make it look like the little roots that you sometimes have left at the end of the um, leak. But I think that makes for a, an adequate leak for the kind of situation that I'm going to be putting it in. And I've actually made a few already and I have stuck them into place in my um, crate. And then I can add more as a new one and I will just glue that in and I'll do probably a couple more rows and then that will be ready to go into my um, market. So yeah, really, really simple, straightforward kind of an idea there. I have got some other vegetables that I'm going to be making to obviously to fill up my other baskets and other parts of the scene. Um, but um, I'm going to leave the actual making of them here today. One thing I am going to um, point out to you, these, which are putka pods, I think that's how you pronounce it, look brilliantly like little pumpkins and I will be painting some of these up to go in the scene as well. It's coming to that sort of time of year. You'll find them in the floral departments normally. They're used as um, filler on wreaths and things like that so they're worth looking out for. Just a little um, 
tip there. So yeah, vegetables. I hope you've enjoyed me showing you how you can make some um, passable vegetables out of fairly ordinary materials. Um, and as I say, these vegetables are great in a scene like I'm going to be making where they're not going to be front and centre. You know, I'm not saying they're perfect, but they're definitely going to work as fillers. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and ring that notification bell. It's the best option we've got for you finding out when I put another video up. I don't know when that's going to be because I'm not really working to a schedule at the moment, but um, I'm trying to keep putting them out and um, hopefully you'll keep trying to watch them. And until next time, bye.